Maduro Uchiha has one of the best character introductions in the entire shonen genre. It's amazing, and the climax of his introduction is essentially Madara shoving two meteors down the fourth division of the Shinobi Alliance, a jutsu that, even though was used late in the series, has definitely become iconic. Madara tells Kabuto to not misunderstand because he hasn't created anything, and then Madara proceeds to use the power of a god, and these are Gara's words actually when Gara stares up and sees a meteor falling down towards him and the alliance he says yeah this is the power of a god obviously his demeanor was much more apprehensive but you get the picture the most interesting part is that Gara and Anoki two Kage combine their powers and manage to stop the first meteor which is already an epic scene and would have been a great introduction for Madara already but that's not enough because Madara just says well then, what are you going to do about the second one, Onoki? And then a second meteor comes crashing down upon them. Without the shadow of a doubt, one of the greatest moments of the series, one of the greatest modern moments, one of his greatest quotes, and I believe no Naruto fan is ever going to forget the first time they've watched or read those two meteors stacking up on each other, crashing down the Alliance and the sheer desperation and hopelessness that that caused. Think about this for a second. Naruto Uzumaki is not the type of character character that runs away ever. It doesn't matter how screwed he is, he always faces his problems head on, that's why they call him the number one knucklehead shinobi, and the dude kind of backs that up, because for instance, in the Land of Waves, they were facing one of the most dangerous and deadliest jonins ever in Zabuza, and their sensei Kakashi, the only one who could be a match to Zabuza, was captured and pretty much at his mercy, but what does Naruto do? He faces against the demon of the Mist Village, and he manages to free Kakashi from the water prison. And then later on in the Land of Waves, Naruto simply enters Haku's house of mirrors with no fear whatsoever, even though that was a terrible idea. In the Chunin exams, he faces down Orochimaru, one of the three legendary Sanin, a man who literally paralyzed Sasuke Uchiha, the prodigy of the Leaf Village, by sheer fear and his presence. And Naruto was just like, nah, yeah, I'm gonna face this guy, I don't care. And he stops a snake bigger than my... Later on in the Chunin exams, he fights against Gara, the guy who's been killing people and turning them into mush non-stop and he literally saw him doing so a few hours before and then Gara transforms into this gigantic sand monster that's supposed to put fear in the hearts of anyone who's going to face it and Naruto's just like nah man just leave that to me I'm gonna face this thing and he does so when Itachi and Kisami knock on his door and literally capture Naruto sure he kind of goes along with him but then he doesn't try to run away he tries to fight two of the most powerful and dangerous ninjas of all time he fights against Kabuto, not really caring about his status and that he is much more powerful than Naruto was. He just protects Tsunade and does not run away whatsoever, even though he almost dies in the process. In Naruto Shippuden, he fights against several Akatsuki members, Deidara, Itachi, Kakuzu, Pain. He fights against Orochimaru again, and these are extremely dangerous ninjas. And Naruto knew how powerful they were, and he never tries to run away. But what happens when Naruto sees that meteor? the Madara simply made appear in the sky. He gives a quick glance to the thing and literally runs away without a word. Naruto, the main character of the series, the character who's defined by never giving up and never running away from his challenges, never going back on his word, looks at this thing and says, Sorry gamers, I may be your protagonist, but I'm not a miracle worker, so I might as well get the hell out of here. Just like that, Naruto looks at the meteor and the guy who's tried everything in the past to fight against people that are obviously way more powerful than he was because he just didn't care about the consequences. He looks at the meteor and says, yeah, there is absolutely nothing I can do in this circumstance. Yeah, you may say that that was a shadow clone, but we saw how powerful the Naruto shadow clones were in the war arc. He was literally defeating Kages, and not weak Kages, two of the most powerful Kages that have existed, Mu and the Third Reich Kage, were defeated by this very same shadow clone of Naruto. He doesn't even try to fight against the meteor, He's just like running away like an extra, like the entire alliance around him. A very humbling moment for our orange protagonist. Mother was at another level and it's very clear by what he can perform. Sure, we've seen things kind of like that before with Chibaku Tensei, but this was different. First because he was really casual, unlike Chibaku 
potency, which took a lot of efforts. Also, it was two meteors apparating into the sky out of nowhere. Shibaku Tensei used the Earth itself to form the planetoid around that dark orb, but Tengai Shinsei, or Heaven Conceal, the two meteors Mother tossed, they just appear. And this essentially becomes Madara's signature ability, because it's the first thing we see here. A moment that's etched in our memories. But even though it's so iconic, Madara never really uses it again, even though he's a prominent antagonist up until almost the end of the series. Because think about it for a second, he was able to wipe out practically the entire 4th Division. Yes, there were a few survivors, Dodai, the gummy guy, he saved himself, and Naruto Shadow Clone. Also, Onoki tanked the two meteors, Gara managed to survive and save Timari with him, and a couple of other ninjas as well, but the rest was essentially wiped out. Also, when the entire destruction is done, Madara literally tells Kabuto as he looks at the landscape he just wiped out and says, oh, such a nostalgic sight. Which infers that either he's already used the jutsu before, or he's just referring to other destructive sights he's caused in the past, which can also be the case. So maybe this was the first time Madara ever used Tengai Shinsei. Because that's the thing, it's certainly a Renegon ability. It has the Ten in the name, you know, Tengai Shinsei, Shinra Tensei, Bansho Tenning, Chibaku Tensei. The Ten suffix means divine, and it's connected to the abilities of the Diva Path. So Tengai Shinsei is more than likely a variant jutsu of the Diva Path itself that only an original Awakener of the Renegon can use. Nagato wasn't really an original Awakener, so he couldn't use that, but Madara is. And the reason why he wouldn't have used it in the past, in the Warring States period, against Hashirama, is because he didn't have the Renegon at that time, because he only awakened it when he was about to die, really, really old. And in that age, he wasn't really fighting anyone, so there wasn't any room for him to use Tengai Shinsei before he was revived via Ero Tensei. Madara is testing his powers around and saying, well, let me see what I can do here, let me try to summon two meteors, even though he kind of knew exactly what he was doing, he knew exactly when the second meteor was gonna fall, and that's when the line came, well, we're gonna go to the second one, okay, ha <laughs> ha. Still, even though this may explain why Madara didn't use Tengai Shinsei in the past, when it could have been really helpful, it doesn't explain why he never used it again in the war arc itself. Cause yeah, two meteors appearing out of nowhere, crashing down upon you, is a pretty powerful jutsu. He could have certainly used the jutsu against the five kage, for example, or even against the alliance when he was on top of the ten tails. Imagine the ten tails shooting bijudamas upon the alliance, and at the same time, meteors coming down in the sky. Sounds like a pretty broken combo to me. Those meteors were so powerful that when they crashed, they felt the vibrations on the ground. I mean, essentially an earthquake happened all the way in the headquarters of the alliance, which was far away from the battlefield itself. Madara only uses this jutsu one time. Well, he does something kinda similar to Tengai Shinsei later on, when he becomes the Ten Tails in Churiki and gets his second eye just before he casts the Infinite Tsukiyomi. Madara uses a multi-planetoid Chibaku Tensei and creates dozens of planetoids above the alliance, and then he tosses them down. He has another really cool line before he tosses them down, he says, oh, these may be a little bit heavier than raindrops, but that's the thing, it's a different process and a different jutsu, that was Chibaku Tensei. You clearly see Madara creating the dark orbs that suck earth into them, forming the planetoids, and then he simply tossed the planetoids down. But Tengai Shinsei, aka Heaven Concealed, simply creates the meteors out of thin air, or summons them, however you want to call it, we don't know exactly the mechanics, but you don't really require a Chibaku Tensei orb to pull Earth from the ground and then toss them down. So Madara only uses Tengai Shinsei once, even though that usage of Chibaku Tensei may feel similar. So we have to take a look at how this jutsu works and why would Madara not want to use it after the first time. In order for you to activate Heaven Concealed, you have to weave three simultaneous hand signs. Madara uses our corporeal Susano to weave two of those hand signs and weaves the third himself. There would be other options if he couldn't use the Susano. For example, he could use the Asura path and sprout out those weird mechanic limbs. Or in theory, he could even use wood clones if he needed to, or even shadow clones, but he used the Susano. Weaving simultaneous hand signs is a type of limitation here. If you think about it, casting Chibaku Tensei is easier by default because it only requires one very simple hand sign. You clap your hands together and that's the cast for Chibaku Tensei. You don't have to weave three hand signs at the same time. But even still, it's not as 
as though Madara can't really use his Susano, is it? He has a thing out almost all the time, so it wouldn't be a real problem for him to weave three hand signs simultaneously. But you know, it is a sort of limitation. So let's take a look at the fights Madara participates and determine why he chose not to use Tengai Shinsei in any of them after he first fought the 4th Division. First, he fights against the 5 Kage. Now, there's one thing that Madara has already seen how Onoki and Gara were able to stop one of the meteors, and with 5 Kage, they would probably do better stopping the meteors together. Onoki and Gara had already seen Madara's jutsu, which wouldn't take anybody by surprise, meaning that the 5 Kage would be able to react. But even still, knowing that two meteors are coming down and crashing upon you is fine, but it doesn't really diminish the power of the jutsu itself. I still think Tengai Shinsei would have been very effective against the 5 Kage, maybe wouldn't destroy them outright, but it would at least be a decent distraction. But the thing about the 5 Kage fight was that Madara wasn't really taking it very seriously. He was first trying to see how powerful the 5 Kage are, trying to gauge the strength of this new generation, trying to see what they were made of, and he was also testing all of his new jutsus out. He was using all those new wood style techniques he acquired after getting a lot of Hashirama cells, Deep Forest Emergence, the Poland Flower Jutsu, the Wood Clones with Susanos. I mean, when he used those 25 Susanos against the 5 Kage, the real Madara was just sitting back, crossing his arms and analyzing the fight and say, oh, okay, Onoki's fighting really well here. He's pretty much carrying the 5 Kage, a lot of strategies overall. But you can see the guy is not really serious in the entire fight. It's only in the end when the 5 Kage come up with a very decent strategy to counter Madara's ninjutsu absorption in the Susano, where Madara has to pull out his perfect Susano and then he gets serious. And when that happens, the fight's pretty much over. I mean, first, Itachi releases the Edo Tensei, so Madara loses the perfect Susano. When the fight actually ends and the 5 Kage are defeated by Madara, we don't really see what happened. The 5 Kage are pretty much off screen. And we know Madara didn't use a second Tengai Shinsei on the Kage off screen because we don't see a second crash site and the wounds the 5 Kage sustained are not meteor crashes, they are piercing wounds. And in Tsunade's case, it's pretty clear that Madara used a wood style attack to bisect her in half. But still, Madara doesn't use Tengai Shinsei because he was trying other stuff out and measuring the Kage's strength. Madara then arrives to the battlefield where Obito was fighting against Naruto, B, Guy, and Kakashi. And Madara is also just kind of watching this fight. He's not doing a lot of work because Obito had already put the plan in motion. The Ten Tails was being revived when Madara arrived, so there wasn't anything Madara could do. He just had to wait for the Ten Tails to be created. And even though the Nine and the Eight Tails were on the battlefield and Madara could, in theory, capture them, he couldn't really seal them into the Ghetto Mazo anymore. He would have to wait for the Ten Tails to come out and then do all that stuff to <laughs> seal the Ten Tails into the Ghetto Mazo again and then get the Nine and the Eight Tails. But in the meantime, he was just chilling and testing out new techniques, just like he was doing in the 5 Kage fight. He uses his Wood Dragon and pretty much stops Naruto's Kurama avatar with a very simple jutsu. And other than that, Madara's just kind of watching things unfold here because he doesn't have a lot to do. And he cannot kill Naruto and B because then the 8 and 9 tails would die and it would take a long time for them to reappear in the world, which would set back Madara's plans. But then the 10 tails appears and as we saw before, Madara doesn't really use Tengai Shinsei anymore here. He's just using the Ten Tails, shooting Bijudamas, and pretty much sitting on top of the Ten Tails' his head the entire time with his arms crossed, looking at what the Alliance is doing. And he does that because he wants to test the Ten Tails' his powers. Obito literally tells him, you're like a child wanting to play with your new toy, aren't you, Madara? That's why you want to use the Ten Tails. But then he says, no, because children are naive and impatient. And he wasn't either of those things. He doesn't use Tengai Shinsei here because he's trying out the Ten Tails powers and, well, why would he try out something that he knows how to do? It's not as though they were in danger or anything, they were just waiting for the Ten Tails to mature so that one of them could become the Jinchuriki, which eventually happens. But before that, Madara fights against Hashirama again, Edo Tensei versus Edo Tensei. And in this situation here, unlike in the previous situation, the Valley of the End, when Madara didn't have a Rinnegan, he can use Tengai Shinsei as an Edo Tensei versus Hashirama. And yet, he doesn't. I mean, we technically don't see that entire fight unfolding on screen because it's pretty much implying what's happening here and there, but we don't see the entire picture. But 
I'm pretty sure that if Madara had summoned two gigantic meteors into the battlefield, we would have seen it happening, even if it's from a distance, but this simply doesn't happen. And there are a lot of very wide shots that we see the entire battlefield during that part of the war arc, and we never see meteors laying around anywhere. So Madara simply didn't use those against Hashirama there. And to be honest, it's very simple why he wouldn't choose to do that against Hashirama. First, because he's an Edo Tensei and he can regenerate from the meteors. Second, because if Onoki literally tanked the Tengai Shinsei meteors and Gaara managed to block them with his sand, Hashirama would have no problem blocking them with his wood golem or any other powerful wood style jutsu. So Tengai Shinsei would simply not be effective against a guy like Hashirama. Mother's next fight is after he's revived by Obito's Rina Tensei and he fights against all nine tail beasts, but he doesn't really use Tengai Shinsei. First, because he didn't have his Rinnegan, he was fighting them blind, so he wouldn't even be able to do that. But when he gets his Rinnegan, he immediately uses Limbo and one-shots every single tail beast. There would be no point in using Tengai Shinsei instead of Limbo if the Limbo clone can do the job in two seconds. And Madara couldn't use Limbo when he was an Edo Tensei because the Rinnegan he had as an Edo form wasn't a real one. It was just a projection that could mimic the powers of a Rinnegan, but it was limited. He couldn't summon the Ghetto Mazo or use Limbo. But now he can, and Limbo, let's face it, is far more powerful than Tengai Shinsei. Mother then becomes the Jinchuriki of the Ten Tails, and he fights against my guy who opens the Eighth Gate. And Mother pretty much only uses Truth Seeking Orbs to fight Guy, but think about it. If he summoned two meteors in the battlefield, sure he can use a Truth Seeking Orb shield to protect himself, but Guy can certainly outrun the meteor falling down. He wouldn't even be hurt by them. And then when Madara fights against Naruto and Sasuke in their god forms, Sasuke with the Rinnegan and Naruto with six path sage mode, they can easily take care of meteors falling down upon them. It would be ineffective to throw the Tengai Shinsen against them. We literally see how Naruto and Sasuke deal with meteors falling down upon them, tossed by Madara himself with that Chibaku Tensei. Sasuke cuts through them very easily with his perfect Susano, and Naruto summons dozens of Bijudama Rasen Shurikens which explode dozens of Chibaku Tensei meteors. And Madara knew that the Chibaku Tensei wouldn't really kill Naruto and Sasuke there. He just wanted a distraction so that he would have time to cast the Infinite Tsukiyomi. But there's another interesting question here. Why did he use Chibaku Tensei instead of Tengai Shinsei? Because sure, he knows he's not going to destroy Naruto and Sasuke with it, but he needed a distraction, so why doesn't he summon the Tengai Shinsei meteors instead of having to create them from the ground itself? and then toss him down. It would have been faster and it would have probably more effective to just summon them as Tengai Shinsei meteors. It would have given Naruto and Sasuke way less time to respond, but instead he just uses Chibaku Tensei. Well, narratively speaking, Chibaku Tensei looks cool because he can summon all those meteors into the battlefield before he tosses them down and you see them hanging in the sky, which makes for a very cool shot. But also the limitation we spoke about, Madara has to weave three hand signs simultaneously for Tengai Shinsei, and he never really uses his Susano and his Ten Tails in Churuki form, which is a shame. It's not that he's incapable of doing so, but he kind of chooses not to. I mean, he does use the perfect Susano as the Churuki of the Ten Tails in the video games, but never in the anime or manga. So maybe he just can't, and therefore he wouldn't be able to weave three hand signs simultaneously, even though he could probably do that with his Limbo clones, <laughs> or just normal clones, or use the Anthra path, but he chooses to use Chibaku Tensei. Maybe there's a limit to the number of meteors you can summon with Tengai Shinsei, and Chibaku Tensei doesn't really obey that limit, so Madara could raise dozens of meteors up in the sky with Chibaku Tensei, and he wouldn't be able to toss as many Tengai Shinsei meteors down. And let's face it, he needed a lot of meteors to distract Naruto and Sasuke. Narratively speaking, why Kishimoto chose not to use Tengai Shinsei anymore is because that was an epic first moment of introduction for Madara, but topping that moment would have been extremely difficult. Every time Madara used Tengai Shinsei again after the first time, people would compare it to the first time and say, oh, it wasn't as epic or as interesting, or ooh, we saw that jutsu before, it's not as exciting as it was in the first time. Or have I heard that before? But it's a problem for the writing aspect of the jutsu. If you don't think you can beat the first time, you shouldn't even try it again, because then the coolness and the specialness of the jutsu will be diluted into these other moments. Having Tengai Shinsei only being used once makes it just that more special, 
and epic when it happens. Because think about this for a second. Back in Naruto part 1 when Naruto Shippuden didn't even exist and you saw Sasuke using the Chidori for the first time and then Naruto using the Rasengan for the first time, those were very special jutsus, weren't they? Because they were rare. Our characters hadn't used them that much and they were extremely cool and well-made jutsus. But now, let's face it, whenever Sasuke used the Chidori in Naruto Shippuden or Naruto used the Rasengan, it's just another Tuesday. The same thing can be said about the Susano when Itachi was the only character who had it and he only used that for a couple of pages in the fight against Sasuke and nobody else had done it. All of a sudden, a lot of people get the Susano, and I don't dislike that choice, I'm just saying that it made the Susano less unique. The same thing would happen with Tengai Shinsei, even though Mother would be the only person using it, it would make that moment less unique and impactful just because it was not the only time that was used. After that, he thought, okay, I have to keep on giving this guy new jutsus to make him more exciting. If he just repeats the same jutsus over and over again, it'll get a little overbearing. And yes, sure, Madara uses the Susano and the Preta Path a lot of times, but it's a different thing entirely from tossing meteors every two seconds. It would get a little obnoxious if that was the only thing Madara could do. Also, the Preta Path and the Susano are two jutsus with far more versatility and utility than Tengai Shinsei, so from an in-universe perspective, it would make sense for Madara to use them far more often than Tengai Shinsei. Like this video to help me out with the YouTube algorithm, watch this other cool Naruto video right here, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thank you so much for watching.